Hey Indy, let's see what you think of this new Nutrisource food. Nutrisource is a super high quality premium food, but what makes it different than other foods? They actually mill their own legumes and grains, grind their own meats, and cook all of their recipes below 200 degrees to maximize nutrition. That means more nutrient dense recipes that are highly absorbable, so you can actually feed your dog less and get more nutrition. Plus, nutrient dense recipes taste better, so even the pickiest pets will love it. Nutrisource created a proprietary blend of supplements for their food, and they call this good for life. This blend can relieve common stomach issues, allergies, and digestive issues. Their puppy formulas deliver super premium nutrition with higher levels of protein and fat that your puppy needs when they're growing. This ingredient list is about as impressive as it gets. I mean, does your dog food have garbanzo beans and red lentils, for example? This is the best value pound for pound when it comes to cost, quality ingredients, and their unsurpassed good for life supplements. She knows quality when she eats it. And their quality extends to their treats as well. And you can get Nutrisource's high quality quality food from PetFlow. You can select Nutrisource's products to be automatically delivered to you in any time interval you prefer. Just enter code ZAC30 when you check out and you'll get $10 off your first three orders. Click thumbs up for Indy. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Get a copy of my book. If you enjoy our content, you're going to love us on Instagram. I'm going to have my Instagram below, at Zach George. In fact, today I'm going to take a few of your questions exclusively from Instagram. Please do a video on obedience after electric collar training. What if my dog is very well trained but blows off commands when I remove the electric collar? What I like about this question is that it underscores a very important point and something that's fundamentally flawed about using things like electric collars, prong collars, and choke chains. A little background, this is an electric collar right here and they usually come with a remote control like this. These collars are basically designed and specifically engineered to be very unpleasant to your dog. And you can see it has these like prongs right right here that go into the dog's neck uh, so that they can be very unpleasant for the dog when they're not behaving ideally. I'm very established on record as being very against these types of tools. Uh, and I don't think that they should be used in dog training. However, I still wanna be clear that if you're one of those people out there using them, I understand you're using these because some professional out there told you to. Part of the mission of the dog training revolution is to kind of clean up that mess and show you better ways to communicate with your dog. This is a prong collar. This is another common training tool that people struggle with the same issue with when they take the collar off, the dog doesn't listen as well anymore. And this is a choke chain right here that, you know, I understand a lot of you use these and to your credit for those of you out there who are using using them. I also get that you're not using them in the way that they're intended to, which in my view is a good thing, because the proper way to use a choke chain is to give an abrupt pop every time your dog doesn't do something you like. But of course, I think you'll agree, at least most of you will, that's a very primitive way to communicate with a very intelligent animal like a dog. And in and of themselves, these aren't exactly harmful just hanging around your dog's neck. It's when you use them correctly, as they say, that they become very unpleasant and potentially harmful. And even if not physically, certainly harmful to the relationship between you and your dog. And that really is my biggest issues with tools like this is they do nothing to promote a bond between you and your dog. And that is such an important factor when you're teaching them. And as highlighted in this question, the moment you take these off, dogs are gonna get, oh, that collar isn't on me anymore so I can act as I want. That's one of the shortcomings of training like this and really why you should focus on training your dog from the inside out by motivating them to want to listen to you rather than forcing them to listen to you as in the case of using these collars. Now I've gone over how to teach your dog to leave a treat alone a million times, leave it alone, right? And the way I always show you to teach this is by covering up the treat if they go for it to really make your dog think rather than just simply pulling them away. The common thing that I know a lot of you also deal with out there is when you open the door, your dog will run out of the front door even though you might be pushing. So you've gotten in this habit of kind of holding them back and you know keeping them back with your foot to keep them from running out of the front door. And that doesn't exactly work well, does it? That's why when you teach your dog how to think, you're going to get much better results. Leave it alone. Good, okay, good job. The bottom line is that if you're using training tools like this in the very harsh ways that I've mentioned, it's a very shallow way to communicate with a dog and shallow ways of communication don't really have long lasting results. So what I would recommend to this particular Instagrammer is to check out my videos and basically start over training your dog Train your dog how to think from the inside out so that you can get actual long lasting results not contingent on using some special collar. This next question is from Anna Gillespie 4450 on Instagram who says, I would love a video on raising a border collie pup with tips on how to deal with herding behavior directed towards cars and other dogs. And look, while it is true that many border collie puppies certainly have that herding desire, what you're talking about 
is basically just normal puppy behavior. I can assure you that puppies of virtually every breed out there like to chase cars, bicycles, people, dogs, and everything else. And so what I really want to clear up about a question like this is, I just don't want you to get in the mindset of kind of blaming your dog's breed for issues that you're having, rather than really just understanding that you need to take the time to teach them how to behave in these types of situations. That said, I understand it can be pretty overwhelming to teach a dog who's majorly distracted, especially if they're a really high energy dog, as many Border Collies often are. So in your case, Anna, it's less likely that your dog is actually hurting other dogs and people, and more likely that they're just being a dog. Yeah, I'd really prioritize fetch training so that your dog has an outlet for all of that energy. Next, I'd focus on really doing a lot of impulse control training in the presence of cars and dogs and other things that your dog is likely to react to. And by that, I mean teaching your dog how to look at you and sit and stay and take other types of direction. Now, where most people go wrong with this is, number one, they wait for their dog to start reacting to a situation like this to then communicate with them when their dog is just completely overwhelmed. That's not necessarily a good idea. Set up training instances that are near or around these types of situations, but not right up on them. So in the case of dogs, you might practice working with your dog on sit and stay outside the perimeter of a dog park where you have a fence between your dog and other dogs. That way you're in a position to easily manipulate the distance between your dog and the dogs on the other side of the fence. Uh, in general, the farther you are away from a distraction, the more likely it is that your dog will pay attention to you. And you can focus on really giving them that foundation and training that they need to truly understand how to behave when they're put in this type of situation. But exercise, don't gloss over that point. It's a serious point uh, and one that will make training, usually in your situation, much easier, especially when you use exercise just before your training sessions. And Cherry Blossom 88 from Instagram says, what if your puppy doesn't really like treats? It's obviously important to have a really good currency when you're teaching your dog like good treats. And it is true that some dogs just aren't as into treats as others. There's usually two major solutions to this problem. Uh, very often when someone says their dog doesn't like treats, it's because they're using a treat that's too low value. Uh, very often they'll be using like hard milk bone type treats, or they'll use even their dog's kibble, or just some treat that their dog isn't nuts about. Now, I usually recommend that you're using something really good, like real chicken or some type of real meat, but really small pieces, of course. But even then, there are still some dogs who are like, you know what, I don't even like the real meat, the best stuff you have to offer. And usually that's a sign that you're asking your dog to listen to you in either a situation that's, that they're very excited in or a situation that makes them very nervous where the last thing they're thinking about is food. So it doesn't really mean that your dog or your puppy doesn't like treats. It just means that they're not interested in treats at that particular moment. I mean, all dogs have to eat, remember that. So food is definitely going to be a motivator at some point for dogs. If you're in the position where your dog is like either barking at another dog and you can't get their attention with a really high quality treat, or they're very nervous perhaps because, I don't know, maybe they're nervous of men, for example, Protocol in that situation is to take a step back on your training and ease them into that type of situation rather than kind of moving so quickly to where your dog is completely overwhelmed and in a state of mind that makes them not want to eat. I hope that makes sense. But for many dogs, we have to go much slower than we think we do. Additionally, giving your dog up to maybe 30 minutes or so to kind of warm up to a new environment might also get them in a frame of mind that gets them receptive to taking treats too. So always be cognizant of the context in which you're asking your dog to do something and analyze that first because that's usually the reason a dog won't take at least high quality treats. It's also true that a lot of dogs out there would prefer to play a game of tug of war or have a quick toss of a ball uh, rather than eating food. I know with my own Border Collies that I've had over the years, every single one of them preferred to play over eating during training sessions. Indy, I'm very proud of you. You did a good job today. Give her a thumbs up. Get your Nutrisource dog food automatically shipped to you from Petflow. That link is gonna be below. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Maybe I'll do another video where I take questions from Instagram. So make sure you like me on Instagram, at Zach George. That link will be below. See you guys in the next video.